I'm on the continual lookout for colourful characters that come into our crowd because they're potential hecklers and uh, usually very interesting. And uh, my eye was uh, on this guy. His name was Corey, uh, wearing a skull and crossbone and a, and a uh, pirate's hat and all sorts of gear. I thought, man, he's going to be great. And he was standing there while Scotty was speaking, so I uh, went up and said hello and found out his name, and I thought, okay, I'll tuck that into my memory and pull him up at the right time when I'm speaking. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, Andrew Rappaport, my friend, was speaking when Corey just jumped out of the crowd, jumped on the box, and started heckling him. And uh, Andrew did a wonderful job. By the time I got up there, uh, I just had the wrap up. But I think you're gonna find this very interesting. Corey uh, considered himself to be a prophet of God to the nations. Uh, he had been dead five times and come back to life. Uh, he had a Mormon background. Uh, this is very colorful, and I, I think you're going to enjoy it. John chapter 8 and John chapter 10, both of those passages, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews pick up stones to stone him, right? Okay. Because he was Adam. Hold on, hold on. First so, will be last, then, sir. Then what we have is he says that I and the Father are one. Again, the Jews pick up stones to stone him. Now, here's a simple thing. When we interpret the Bible, we have to remember something that is written 2,000 years ago. We have to understand what the words meant at that time. So when Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one, and before Abraham was, I am, the Jews pick up stones to stone him, and he says, for what good works do you stone me? And they say, not for any good works, but you being a man claim to be God, blasphemy. They understood what he's saying. So when you say that Jesus never claimed to be God, he claimed it so clearly that they wanted to stone him to death because he, being a man, claimed to be God. Now, he not only claimed it, but 48% of the gospel accounts refer to Jesus as God directly or indirectly. Every time he read someone's mind, he was doing something only God could do. He was showing he's omniscient. Every time he controlled the weather or healed someone, he said he did that of his own authority, and he showed that he has the authority that only God could have. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you that if you go onto my Facebook to check this, I made a hurricane come up to New York an hour after I prayed from it for it. Wait, you made the hurricane come up? Because I asked- I'm from I New York, it's your fault. Three days after I told them, if you do not let me leave Utah, there will be, this place will burn. Okay. Three days later, 150 miles away from where I'm at, naturally started the biggest forest fires in Utah's so, history. Here's the thing, Corey, you were saying that I am a New Testament only believing Christian, right? That's what you said earlier. Do you know how I was raised? Do you know what I was raised to believe about Jesus Christ? I would, I'm gonna guess because of the way you're speaking right now, probably Protestant. Okay. So Corey claims to be a prophet, and he does not know that I was raised to believe Jesus Christ is Hitler's God. I was raised a generation after the Holocaust as a Levite of the family of Levi as a Jew. Well, I did not believe in Jesus. I wasn't raised to believe in Jesus. In fact, I was raised to hate Jesus, okay? Jesus Christ, for me, as a Jew, represented the Holocaust, the Inquisitions, and the Crusades. We blamed everything on Jesus. So when you say you're a prophet, you should know that you're saying that you claim to speak for God. You should be able to do that. I do. Now, here's the thing I want to say to you, Corey, because I this is in my you heart. Three times here in Huntington, where God absolutely hid the beach blitz, where my fiance was supposed to meet me but didn't show up, absolutely mysteriously fogged it out for the entire two days. <laughs> At the end okay. of Magnolia, where me and her actually got together. No, no. Okay. So I, this is absolute truth. Yeah. So here's what I want to know, on. Corey. Here's no, what I want to know from you, though. Here's what I want to know. Where good. would you spend eternity? That's the that's the most important thing. Now you said you know for sure, right? Because of your prophecies. Let me ask you this, Corey. Yes. Corey, are you a good person? As as much as a filthy rag can be. Okay. As much as. So have you ever lied? Of course, I'm okay. human. So what would that make you? Human. Okay, if I lied to you, what would you call me? A liar. You, when I asked you if you tell a lie, what would you call that? It's so hard for us to call ourselves liars. We say we're human like everybody else. 
but we can recognize, if I ask you what, what would you call me, it's very easy to say a liar. This is something that's true with everybody. It's so much easier to see that everyone else is a liar, but not ourselves. Okay, this is a way that our, our heart deceives us. Okay, you go back to the Old Testament, Jeremiah says, our heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can trust it? So let me ask you another question. You say you're a liar like me. Have you ever stolen anything, Corey? Yeah. Yeah, okay, what would that make you? Thief. A thief. I would be that too. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Of course. <laughs> okay, so that means you do have blood, red blood flowing through your veins, right? Okay. Now here's the thing. You know the New Testament, Jesus Christ said that if you lust with, after someone, that is like committing adultery in the heart. So Corey, by that standard, you and I would both be seen by God as being lying, thieving, adulterers at heart, right? And you must be baptized, which is cleanse of okay, that. Okay, well, hold on. Let's, get, let's go step by step. Would we both be guilty in God's sight? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Would we both deserve heaven or hell? Of course, hell. So God, God can pay because he's an eternal being. Yeah. By Jesus, the nature of Jesus being fully God, he can pay the fine for all of eternity. But he had to also be a man never violating the law to pay for men. Okay, that's what makes Jesus Christ unique. This is what sets the, the biblical Christianity apart from every other world religion. There's three things. One, Jesus is fully God, fully man. Two, it's the only religion where you can have a God that's both just and merciful. Justice and mercy are, are mutually exclusive. If you hit me and the law says I must hit you back, I have one of two choices. I could show mercy and not hit you, or I could hit you and show justice, but I can't show both. Because if I try to hit you lightly, it's not justice and it's not mercy, right? So Jesus Christ being fully God, fully man, can die on a cross, make the payment of sin for sinners, and therefore now that the justice is paid, he can pay mercy. Let me give you a third thing. I know you want to say so. Third reason what makes biblical Christianity unique is this. Only within biblical Christianity do you have a religion that's divine? Let me explain this in one second. There is an objective way to know any man-made religion versus a divine religion. Men always add their own effort to, what, to getting right with God. This is an essential thing, because every world religion, if you look at the Jehovah Witnesses over there, they add works. You look at the Muslims, they add works. You look at the Second Temple Judaism, how I was raised, they add works. Every single world religion that's man-made will add human effort to what God does. Only within the Bible do you have something where God does all the work on the cross 2,000 years ago when he came to earth as a man, died on that cross, paid the consequence that we owe that we could be set free when we turn from trusting ourselves as a good person, don't trust in our good works, but trust in Jesus Christ. Now this is the difference between what you said and what I'm saying. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do that and also click on the bell for notifications so that you're notified whenever we post new videos. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. And Corey, we want you to be saved on Judgment Day Sir, because you trust in your own Jesus. I've been pronounced dead five times in this country, documented in hospitals. Want to bet on this, sir? I'll literally go with you to any hospital you want and let them pull my medical records right this minute. Well, what matters here is that you're alive today, <laughs> and today you can repent and trust alone in Christ. That's great. Want to bet on this, sir? Because I'll own whatever you want to bet on it. Quickly. So you've been dead four times? No, uh, five. Five? And what, did, what killed you? First time was a full-size Dodge truck. The next 16. time you die, we want you to be trusting in Jesus alone, not in the fact you hear voices. I didn't say that I didn't trust in God or Christ. I said because of what I've shown, my faith, what I've been shown, and what has been done through me, my faith of what they showed me says that especially because it's happened three times in my life on totally separate instances, years apart. The exact same thing this is true. Because Christ himself even said, even said, I only do as the Father has shown me or given me the abilities to do. Says he's of God, right? But see, when you don't understand and realize that the way he was before Abraham is because he was Adam, 
who gave us our first sin, when he come back as Christ, he died to What are you talking about? That's heresy. Are you crazy? I guess so. You've got a, yeah, you've got a messed up Mormon mix going on in there.